Hey guys, Dane from Skagen Dickey Parts Center here with a quick little tech tip. Uh, we've had a lot of questions about this uh, raised from a previous video that we did regarding installing a Gen 4 or 58X uh, engine in a Gen 3 or 24X uh, signal car or truck. Uh, a lot of questions, as you guys probably saw in the introduction on this video, that uh, a lot of people are asking about installing a 24X or Gen 3 LS into a Gen 4 or 58X signal car. Uh, so if you're using a standalone ECU, that's not really an issue because you're going to be able to, uh, you know, change up the settings as far as what signal you're looking for, uh, as well as a, a myriad of other things. And so if you guys are doing that with a standalone ECU, this video is probably not for y'all because uh, you probably already know what you're doing in regard to that. Uh, if you do have a Gen 3 engine and you have a Gen 4 uh, car or truck, really the, the easiest thing to do to save yourself a lot of heartache and trouble is to just go ahead and sell that Gen 3 engine. Uh, now, that's, that's, really, that's really it uh, because of the fact that no amount of tinkering with the harness or anything else like that is going to get that Gen 3 engine to talk with the Gen 4 PCM correctly because you're taking a 24X signal and trying to step it up to a 58X and it's not going to like that. Uh, the, the conversion box that we have uh, is for stepping down a 58X signal down to a 24. You can't do the other way around. You, you can't make uh, scale up something and expect the resolution to do better. Um, you know, it's just like, you know, downloading and re-uploading and downloading again a uh, JPEG or for you guys that like to screenshot a screenshot of a screenshot on your uh, on your cell phone and then re-upload it to Facebook. You'll know what I mean. That's like, that's pretty much what you do when you go from a 24X to a 58X trying to scale everything up. But anyway, so for you guys that are like, I really do like my engine. I want to keep this Gen 3 setup. It's got a lot of really nice components. Uh, you can make it happen, but it's going to require some hardware changes. So for those that are just that either you've already just got the components, you haven't assembled the engine, or if you like taking stuff apart and then putting it back together again, uh, then this video is going to help you out maybe just a little bit. So there's some of the components that I don't have here in the video just because of you know time constraints and availability just with GM at the moment. Uh, but right off the bat, this is your 24X uh, reluctor wheel. So you guys that have got a Gen 3 engine, you'll see this on the back of the crankshaft. Uh, there's tools to be able to, to remove and mount this. It's really uh, something that's going to be important to pay attention to because when you're going from the 24 to the 58, I'm going to move this stuff over here, uh, this reluctor wheel is very, very different, as you can see. So, for one, the 24X has got two lines, or two rows of teeth, and this one only has one row. So, you know, stack height is relatively the same and whatnot. I don't have a micrometer on me. But you're going to have to remove this as well as uh, take care of uh, removing any of the, the spot welds or anything that, that have got this tacked to the crank. And then you're going to have to press this on as well as weld this to the crank so that it doesn't move. We've seen issues where guys take this and they, uh, they don't weld it. So after a while, this starts to kind of come out of uh, position and when your reluctor wheel is not meshing up with the position of your crankshaft, uh, your crankshaft position sensor and your ECU is going to be like, we've got a problem. Um, so much uh, as, as, as important as that is, uh, the other thing is to make sure that you know you, you use quality components as far as when you're welding all of this, you make sure the crank is clean and all that because you're going to be spending this thing, you know, six, seven, eight, some of you guys, maybe more thousand RPM. Uh, it's going to be important that you've got all that stuff, you know, put together and nice and happy. So as far as going from the 24 to 58, also, one of the things that was really nice before is you could look at an engine and you'd see a black crankshaft position sensor and you go, oh, 
well, that's a 24x. Well, and then the 58x was supposed to be light gray. But as time goes on, and GM likes to do supersessions, we're changing you know, suppliers or whatever, uh, they're the same color now. So really, the, uh, the only way to be able to tell is gonna be based off of right here, the connector, there's a little, uh, a little lip or groove here that's going to be on either it's it, they're, they're on opposing sides so when you look at that you should be able to tell what sensor is what uh, so don't always rely on the fact that it's a, a black sensor that you know you've got the right setup or whatnot also the other thing is when you go from a uh, 24 to a 58 you also need to step up your cam your cam sensor from a 1x to a 4x so as you guys see here, this is a 4X. It has four nodes on here for this cam sprocket. Uh, you, can't do, you can't do half of this. You have to do all of it. Uh, there's, there's none of this you know, saving a buck here and there because you're just gonna end up having to tear the engine apart again to put in the right components. Uh, you know, there's, there's only so much of the mad scientist stuff that works and then the rest of this is just proven you know, as far as making the conversion happen. So this one is a three bolt uh, camshaft sprocket. We also have single bolt. Pay attention to what you're ordering with those components whenever you order your camshaft. Also, uh, depending upon the way that this has the, uh, the, the bolts and everything, as well as the dowel clocked, it's gonna be a little bit different, but depending upon whether you're using an OEM style camshaft or an aftermarket camshaft and who grinds the camshaft for you, uh, there might be some degrees of advance or retard depending upon you know what you get. So pay attention to the actual camshaft specs as well as, as, well as what's recommended. Uh, there are some that do offer some uh, adjustability, whether it be for your camshaft sprocket as well as your lower uh, camshaft or your crankshaft um, gear. Also, the other part, your front timing cover. So now, moving your camshaft sensor from the valley cover it's down here actually on this valley cover this is a nice valley cover this is from gm uh, it actually comes with the the sensor and everything plus a little bit of the wiring all tied in together so that way when you've got everything apart you're starting to put it back all together you're going to need to change over to this style timing cover this is also something that we use for our vvt deletes uh, so if you guys are also doing a VVT delete, that's that's something to also consider. Other things, uh, you also have various things from wiring. You're going to be moving your knock sensor from out of the valley cover down to the side of the block. Uh, ICT billet has a really nice uh, set of brackets as well as a harness extensions available for that. Uh, I don't have them on hand, but uh, you can get them through us or through ICT billet, either which way. You're not going to make me mad. but. Uh, they they have a they've, they've thought it through uh, just about like everything else through those guys it's uh it's been pretty amazing being able to work with them and see the uh the amount of uh research that they they've done as far as making your swaps easier so knock sensors moving those down to the side of the block you also have uh you're going to maybe need to do a little bit of wiring as far as extending things for your cam sensor harness or anything I'm not gonna go through every single part of it because people have already documented it. There's other people that have YouTube videos of performing these swaps and making the conversions. Uh, just use Google, it's, it's really easy. Um, and yet sometimes it's uh, a bit of a challenge for some of us. But the uh, throttle body and the intake setup, you guys are probably gonna drop the, uh, the LS1 intake or whatever and, and move to something else. Or maybe you got something that didn't have an intake on it using a Holly High Ram, anything else like that. Pay attention to the uh, power band of your camshaft plus your intake selection, because you know, you're running a really, really short runner on something, you're gonna end up having to spin the envelope and fire out of that engine to actually start making any power, and then you're already out of the power band of the cam. Uh, throttle bodies, you're going from, most of your uh, Gen 3 are gonna be a cable-driven throttle body, and then you're gonna to have to move over and run that electric throttle body. So some of that, if you get the right uh, intake overall, you should already have the bolt patterns for it. 
there are, there are adapter plates to be able to put a four bolt onto a three bolt intake and stuff like that. So, you know, there's, there's no real straight cut uh, as far as like how to on doing all that because everybody's setup is gonna be different. Some of you guys are gonna go, you know, bigger cubes. Some of y'all are gonna go boost. Some of y'all are gonna do both. Uh, so it's just a, a little bit of here and there. So once again, just pay attention to what you're doing. Uh, plan it out ahead of time so that way you know you can save yourself a lot of heartache as far as like not having to put all this stuff into the car and then take it all back out because you decided to save a buck on a component here or there or skip a few of the steps. So once again like I said if you've already got a Gen 3 engine and it's not really uh, you know gonna cause any heartache just sell the Gen 3 and then find yourself a good Gen 4 build. Uh, if you guys really like to do something and, and put stuff together and, and whatnot and actually uh, consider it your own, we do have the components to be able to make a Gen 4, so to speak, out of your Gen 3. Uh, if you guys have got any questions, we've got plenty of guys here that, uh, that have experience with doing this that can help you out as far as specking out the components for you, as well as, you know, if you decide to make some more power out of it uh, while you have it all apart. Um, on top of that, check out any of our standalone ECUs that we have. If you decide that you don't want to use the stock PCM, we have Holly ECUs as well as a variety of others. So that's pretty much it for our, our tech talk this week, and uh, hopefully we'll see you guys next week for another one.